Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another Victober video. And today I'm going to be telling you about 10 books um, which are by female authors, all of which I think are really underrated. So I started writing a list um, for a video I was going to do all about underrated Victorian novels and then I realised that all but one of them were by women so I thought I would just go with that as a theme and tell you about some underrated female Victorian writers who I think are wonderful um, and some novels that I just absolutely love. These aren't ranked by the way, these are more in alphabetical order. And we'll start off with Olive by Dinah Mullet Craig, which if you've watched some of my videos before you may have heard me speak about previously because this one is one of my favourite Victorian novels. I love it so much. Olive is a coming of age story and um, sort of similar in some ways to Jane Eyre. It's not gothic but it has a kind of similar vibe to it that if you like Jane Eyre I think you'll like Olive. It follows a young girl Olive from her childhood into her adulthood. Olive is born with a problem with her spine which means that she doesn't look like the other girls and women around her which means that she is told from a very young age that she is not going to get married and have children but that is probably not going to be part of her life um, and so she decides to do something different with her life. Um, at some point in the book she becomes a painter um, but we also follow a bit of a love story for her later on as well as her relationships with family and friends around her and the way that she deals with the prejudices that she faces um, and also her learning that she deserves happiness as much as everyone else and learning to kind of take that to heart and understand that. It is such a wonderful wonderful coming of age story and I love it so so much. I think it is fantastic and I highly highly recommend it. Next I want to mention Jill by Amy Dillwyn. This is a wonderful Welsh Victorian novel that I love and it tells the story of a woman called Jill. Jill is born to a wealthy family but she doesn't really like her life um, and she doesn't get on very well with her stepmother so she decides to run away and become a servant because why not. Um, she becomes a maid servant um, and ends up working for a woman called Kitty who Jill really falls in love with. Um, I don't think there's any other way of reading it. And the novel is about Jill working for Kitty, her devotion to her, um, and also her working for a few other people later in the book as well. And the novel basically follows Jill's fortunes. Jill um, is very determined that she never wants to get married. She has no time for men whatsoever, um, but she does want to make money um, and she does want to have an adventure and have fun in life. Jill does not at all behave in the ways that a Victorian woman is supposed to behave. She lies and cheats and steals um, and doesn't really care about many people except herself um, and Kitty when she meets her. I have done an individual book review of this which I'll link down below. I love this novel a lot. I think it is such a wonderful, wonderful, unusual Victorian read. So underrated and forgotten but just absolutely fantastic and I can't recommend it enough. I think it is really interesting if you want to read about a rather different Victorian heroine and also if you are interested in kind of LGBTQ plus themes and undertones in Victorian literature, this is absolutely one you have to read. I also want to mention The Story of a Modern Woman by Ella Hepsworth Dixon. This is a late Victorian novel which looks at a young woman who, after the death of her father, tries to work out what she do wants to do with her life. Um, and she tries for a little while to kind of study painting, um, but when that doesn't seem to be working out, she takes to the pen and starts writing stories. And it's about her experience trying to make a living for herself and also her kind of romantic relationships in life as well. I really liked the story of a modern woman. I think it's a really interesting, compelling, short, clever read. It really looks at the kind of like new woman movement of the late 19th century in a really fantastic way. So definitely another one I would recommend. Next I want to mention The Half Sisters by Geraldine Dewsbury. This is another book you may have heard me speak about before because it is one of my other favourite Victorian books and one I really love. This novel follows two half-sisters, Alice and Bianca. They have the same father but different mothers. Alice is the legitimate daughter, um, she is born into a respectable middle-class home, and Bianca is illegitimate, um, the daughter of an affair that her father had with an Italian woman. And she comes from Italy to England at the beginning of the book when she is in her kind of late teens um, with her mother and in order to try and find her father. Um, and in order to support herself and her mother, Bianca becomes an actress. Meanwhile, her half-sister that Alice lives a much more conventional life um, and marries early on in the book and kind of lives the life of a very conventional Victorian woman which is absolutely not what Bianca is doing as an actress and it's about these two half-sisters, mostly about Bianca, the differences between them and what happens when they do finally meet. It is such a fantastic book, I love the way this book looks at the position of women in Victorian society, how it looks at acting as a profession, I love how much Bianca 
Bianca loves her profession and how much she considers it a profession, you know, this thing that is so unrespectable within Victorian society, acting, Bianca loves it um, and takes it seriously. And the romantic relationships in this book I find really interesting too. I just think it looks at marriage and gender and work in Victorian society fascinatingly. Again, I have done an individual book review of this too, so I will link that down below. I love this book a lot. Next, I wanted to mention The Romance of a Shop by Amy Levy. This is another kind of late Victorian new woman novel, like the story of a modern woman, and one that I really, really enjoy. It follows what happens to a group of sisters after the death of their father when they decide they need to support themselves, actually very like the story of a modern woman, um, and they decide to set up a photography shop because they're interested in amateur photography, and it looks at their kind of lives as artists, I suppose, um, as they begin their career as photographers, as well as looking at their kind of romantic relationships um, and the relationships between them as sisters too. I love this book a lot. I think it is fantastic. Um, it's very short, but it packs a lot in and looks really interestingly at the position of women in late Victorian society, looking at um, a group of characters who are all quite different and who have kind of different wants in life, their elder sister is sort of much more conventional in her idea of what women should do. Um, and then the younger sisters are quite different. And this book looks really wonderfully at that in a way I love. I highly, highly recommend it. And I really want to reread this one actually and make an individual book review of it because it's very short and um, really fantastic. But I feel like I would like to read it again and get my thoughts together even more. Such a great read and one I highly recommend. Next, I want to mention Dear Brook by Harriet Martineau. This is another wonderful read that I very much recommend, um, a fantastic Victorian book that looks really interestingly at what it means to live in a small town. This book follows two sisters, Hester and Margaret, um, who as young women move to a new town to stay with some relations um, because they don't have anyone else left. And they end up staying in the town of Deerbrook um, and they form romantic relationships and other complicated things happen. And it's all about the relationships between the people in this small town, how gossip and rumour can destroy people in small towns, how kind of claustrophobic and messy places like that can be, but also it's about these two sisters and all the characters around them. The characterization is wonderful in Deerbrook um, and the pacing is fantastic. I highly, highly recommend Deerbrook. I absolutely loved it and I think it's such a great, great, interesting read, looking at marriage and gender and small towns and class in this fascinating, fascinating way. Next, I wanted to mention Hester by Margaret Oliphant, another favourite of mine. This is a wonderful, wonderful read um, which looks at various different characters in a small town. Again, um, we're chiefly looking at the relationship between two relations, Hester and Catherine. Hester is a young woman who has recently moved to the town with her mother and Catherine is the sort of matriarch of the town, matriarch of the place and matriarch of the family I suppose in many ways and Catherine runs a bank which is quite cool and quite unusual for a woman in the Victorian period and in a Victorian novel. After Hester's father who is dead by the time the main action of the story starts um, couldn't really hack it at running the family bank, Catherine stepped in and took over and now she's elderly and she's kind of readying to pass it on to her young male relations, um, both of whom are a little bit romantically interested in Hester and it's about the complicated relationships between all these people and especially the relationship between Hester and Catherine who are both quite kind of fierce, independent characters um, who have a lot in common but kind of don't like each other because of that almost. I think this book is so wonderful and clever in so many ways. The ways that it looks at gender and class are fascinating and I love the ending of this book. It's sort of not what you expect but I love it and um, like the more I think about the final couple of lines of this book the more I adore it. Again actually I have done an individual book review of this so I'll link that down below. I love Hester so much, such a wonderful like interesting proto-feminist book and I highly highly recommend it. Next I wanted to mention Garth Owen by Alan Rain. Alan Rain is a Welsh female Victorian writer who wrote under a pseudonym and Garth Owen is the only book of hers that I've read that I would like to read more. Garth Owen is set on a Welsh farm and is all about the kind of relationships between the various characters living on this farm, the kind of head of the family and his children um, and all the kind of complicated dynamics between them. I really really liked Garth Owen when I read it a few years ago and um, the pacing and the plotting and the characterization are really really good and the way that it looks at kind of country life and rural life um, and the complications within this one family is really really interesting so that's another one I'd highly highly recommend. 
Next, I wanted to mention Michael Armstrong, The Factory Boy by Francis Trollope. Francis Trollope um, is the mother of Anthony Trollope, who you may have heard of, um, and this is um, one of two books that I've read by her. Michael Armstrong, The Factory Boy is an industrial novel, and um, it looks at various characters um, in this kind of industrial town. Michael Armstrong is not exactly the main character, but he is a young boy who um, accidentally saves the life um, of a woman while she is out walking with the man who owns the factory and this lady says oh we must do something for this boy who saved my life so the owner of the factory decides that he is going to kind of take in Michael Armstrong adopt him and look after him but he's not really a very nice man so things go a bit complicated after that um, and we're slightly following Michael Armstrong but we're more following a few different characters who become interested in him including a young woman who becomes really interested in the kind of plight of factory workers at this point in time who is a fantastic really really interesting character who I love and just really really great. I think her role in the book is magnificent and the way the book looks at kind of industry and industrial changes in general is really really great. So another one that I would absolutely recommend. And finally I want to mention East Lynne by Ellen Wood. This is another wonderful underrated Victorian novel, possibly the least underrated on this list, I'm not sure. I feel like I do hear more people talk about East Lynne than I do most of the other books on this list. But East Lynne is a Victorian sensation novel. I can't tell you too much about it because so much happens so quickly that I feel like it's hard to discuss without spoilers. But you know, there's murder, there's disguises, there's lying and cheating and adultery and lots of complicated, dramatic, sensational things. It is a really wonderful twisty turny book with fantastic characters, a really interesting look at family and marriage um, and motherhood. And there's just so much in this book to love. So I highly, highly recommend it. I think it is a truly wonderful read. And that's it. Those are the 10 books I wanted to talk to you about today. All of these I think are really underrated books but are so so wonderful so if you haven't heard of them before please do go out and find them because they are such brilliant brilliant reads. Please do let me know down in the comments what your favourite underrated Victorian book by a female writer is and that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.